That brings us to the next issue, really. That at the moment, a lot of people would hold that Pakistan is really in a uh, life and death battle with uh, the success of the Pakistan uh, as a state. That's the kind of, uh, at least outside Pakistan, that's the kind of picture that emerges. In this, we would like, we would feel that you know the basic institutions of the state would come together, the political forces would come together in some sense to preserve the state that is Pakistan. But it seems that even now, lots of this institutional uh, stakeholders seem to be fighting against each other and not uniting the way we would expect them to do in a crisis like this. Would you? sort of agree with that? Mm, not completely, because I think if you look at the two main uh, military offenses in Pakistan to fight this entity called the Taliban, you know, fundamentalist Taliban, have been supported both by the political setup as well as the military setup. So there's been no difference of opinion there. I think that's very clear. They're very united. Uh, they're working together. I think uh, one actually sees the political leadership of different uh, persuasion, you know, from Nawaz Sharif to uh, Raza Gilani to even the Pakhtuns as well as Zardari, all working with the military. So I don't think there's very there's, there's much of a difference in how they ought to handle uh, these numerous threats. So the, the military operation is backed by the civilians and I think both efforts are, are working together. I think the, main, the differences did come uh, were sharp during the Kerry Luger bill debate. Uh, and I th and I, I'll say again, I think perhaps it's a personality-driven thing. Perhaps the military is not very happy with a few leading politicians. Maybe Mr. Zadari is one of them. Maybe they, they, they're out to get rid of this corruption uh, angle and corruption, uh, the allegations uh, that Zardari carries. And they feel perhaps that there should be somebody who's less controversial. So I, I don't think that the military and other institutions don't see eye to eye. There is a general consensus that, not shared by everybody, but there's a general consensus that uh, the Talibanization, the Taliban threat is the biggest threat to Pakistan. So most institutions are trying to uh, deal with that collectively. Maybe differences of opinion and emphasis, but I don't think there's very much difference. So you would think that the basic uh, what shall I say, the alliance section of the Pakistani state had with the fundamentalist forces mm -hmm. seeking depth in Afghanistan, uh, intervention in Kashmir, mm -hmm. if you will. This has now actually been given up for a position which is more, in that sense, unified against this threat? Only temporarily, uh, because one doesn't know what happens next. And also, uh, see, this is a very different uh, intervention by the military. Uh, if it was supposed to be supporting um, militants in Kashmir, in Chechnya, in uh, Afghanistan, that uh, was, a, that, that was a, a war or intervention fought on other people's lands. This is being fought in Lahore, you know, the, the, the heart of Pakistan, not just Peshawar, which is probably worse than uh, Baghdad today, uh, and Islamabad also. I mean, so it's, it's, uh, it's actually the heart of Pakistan, Punjab. And I think, and that's the military does come from those areas as well. It's Dera Ghazi Khan, you know, Dera Ismail Khan, the very central Punjab. So I think that uh, the military is also afraid uh, of the extent of the damage that is uh, that is being done, uh, and it's a, it's it's a war of turfs. It's a war of uh, of authority. So to say that the military has given up its other agenda. Probably not. We don't know. And highly unlikely. I think it's it's trying to consolidate its hold over Pakistan, over the institutions of the state, over uh, ter territorially also. After all, the GHQ in Pakistan, in Rawalpindi was attacked. You know, uh, how, how much more vulnerable can the military be when that happens? So I think they're trying to assert their uh, writ over these institutions. And it's not related to what has happened in the past of what may happen with uh, regard to India, with Kashmir or Afghanistan. The two are completely unrelated. But temporarily, mm -hmm. all the fundamentalist or Islamic identity-based political forces seem to have come together, whether it is the Kashmir militants, whether it's the Taliban in Afghanistan, to the Taliban in Pakistan today. We seem to see the pers persona seem to be very, very similar. There are people who are sort of crossing over from one group to the other. Mm -hmm. So in that context, do you think there is a unified response of the Pakistan state to this, or do you think there is still room for 
making differences which even if none exist on oh, the I ground. think there are very clear differences. I think if one sees the reaction to the the Mumbai attacks and those the Lashkar e Taiba and the Lashkar e Jhangvi and Hafiz Saeed and you know they they are not being treated the same way as for example Baitullah Masood was or the other Masood tribesmen. So I think there's it's a different uh, so 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 you know that comes back to what I said earlier that at the moment they're focusing against the Taliban threat. the the afghan taliban threat not what a new phenomenon that has emerged is the the punjabi taliban threat which may include some of these people as well uh, so they 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 treating they differentiating amongst uh, uh, whom they want to attack who their enemy is and so there's certain let's call them taliban who are let off lightly but agm look at it this way elias kashmiri started from kashmir today he is the major fighter in afghanistan as well as in north west pakistan you know so in that sense how is it possible to make this distinctions and not endanger the pakistan state in the long run no i as long as the uh, the military or sections of the military continue to support uh, terrorism uh and uh, you know call it jihad call it terrorism uh, in 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 kashmir or anywhere else uh, i think there it's, it's there's always going to be a backlash there's always going to be a moment or, or more than a moment when these individuals these groups uh, turn against the military as well as may have happened now uh, when al qaeda and taliban may have emerged as a threat to the pakistani state so i think that there is always that danger uh but because the military has designs i think on pakistan as well as because of the india pakistan kashmir problem they will always harbor some groups of uh mercenaries who they will use at some point or the other so i so it's not going away and they haven't learned their lessons I mean, the taliban was created by pakistan's isi so, so much cia of, let's be clear on that but more the isi i think that uh you know let's give the isi more credit than the cia for once that they were more involved in that and faratullah babar and benazir it was in benazir's government uh, and it happened uh, under her nose so it's not it's almost ironic that the the force that she created perhaps was the one which killed her uh, so 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 the isi was very active in that and i think that they will continue to uh, keep players of that sort on a, on a leash and use them whenever they need to can later on lead to blow back thanks a mm. lot akbar this was a very interesting discussion hope to see you soon again and have further discussions on this thanks